D and uh, oh great Elizabeth uh, thank you for coming on come on in Elizabeth Elizabeth Chulowski, uh GM of the online services division of Citrix I appreciate you coming by and uh, My pleasure. we thought you forgot about us but uh, <laughs> I'm glad you could make it all right <laughs> welcome to the cube so uh, we're here at SiliconAngle.com, uh, continuing coverage exclusive of uh, Citrix Synergy in San Francisco, California. We're live. Going to have a total of 15 hours of programming, Dave. So this is the Cube, our flagship telecast, where we go out to events, get the knowledge, extract it out of their brains, share it with you, have a conversation, thought leaders, executives, uh, bloggers, whoever has knowledge to share, we want to sit down and talk to. So Elizabeth, thanks for coming in and, uh, and, and sharing with us. Uh, my pleasure, as I said. Sharing is power, as we learned from uh, CEO of Box.net. So the first question is, is that we had an analyst on David Cahill as part of our team. We're talking about Citrix, and he covers all the conference calls and earnings calls. And he said, you know, like, you know so what do you think about you know go to go to manage and the SaaS business, SMB? He's like, oh, it's a legitimate business, but everyone talks about Zen desktop, Zen, Zen server, but it it never really gets talked about on the analyst calls. But it's a legitimate business, he says in his Boston accent. <laughs> Um, so you run that business. So do you feel like you're left out? Tell us, you know, I mean, I'll see you're running. A, give us the update on the business because it's not a small business. I mean, it's. No, no, it's a very significant business. And you know, maybe we were a little like the, the child that you had that was just always perfect and no <laughs> trouble. So you just uh, let them yeah. do their thing. Um, but when we were acquired by we were, our start as a company was as Expert City in Santa Barbara. So that was 10 years ago. And when Citrix Systems acquired us about five and a half years ago, we were a very small part of the business, so you know, low percentage. And so when you were talking to the analysts, particularly the financial analysts, they actually weren't very interested. We were also were a pure software as a service play, so we do no on-premise. That's our history, and that's yeah. our core, core value prop. Um, and five years ago, that was kind of a strange concept in the world also. But you know, yeah, R&D project, I guess. Yeah, yeah exactly. Now it's everything. Exactly. Fast forward, and you know, in the last couple of years, you see IT really adopting software as a service, and now everybody's talking about cloud, right? And so, so we're in the picture now. So I think you'll see us talked about a lot more going forward because we're a bigger percentage of the Citrix story both in terms of revenue and in terms of just uh, well, let's, let's as Mark says They didn't make you move out of Santa Barbara, did they? Uh, no, we, uh, um, <laughs> in fact, we've, we've grown. We now have a huge conf campus in the northern part of Santa Barbara, 600 people there and 600 others worldwide. Nice, as nice lifestyle business, I guess, uh -huh. you know, as they say. Big company, no. Yeah, no, no anywhere in California is like that. <laughs> <laughs> I live in Palo Alto. I can't complain <laughs> yeah, either, but no. Santa Barbara's... La Jolla, yeah, Santa Barbara, <laughs> Santa Palo Alto, take it. top three. It was be lining up to come to work. <laughs> Good locations. <laughs> we'll take them. No, but okay. Now, getting back to Citrix. Citrix has really been cranking. So, talk about the percentage of the business that you run, and um, size-wise, and just give us the quick stats on the rundowns. Just because we want to get that on the record for the analysts out there who are watching. This is a big, big part of their thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, Citrix Online, that that as a percentage of. Um, Citrix Systems, you can go and take a look at that in the earnings calls. I'm not going to quote off the top of my head. Let me talk about the Citrix online part of the business. So we've yeah, got big picture. three yeah, three lines of business. So we've got a collaboration line. So that's go to meeting, go to webinar, go to training. We've got the uh, IT services line, which is what I run, and that's go to assist and go to manage. And then we've got our access and cloud, which is kind of our, our future type products, including um, including some of the go to my PC, which was uh, a well-known consumer brand. But the part of my business, um, we're actually combined with access uh, about 60% of the online business. So very significant of the, the Citrix online business. So that would be referred to as SaaS or? or we're all SaaS. So anything that I talk about that has a go-to name in front of it is software so the as a service. On the, on the earnings calls, uh, the last quarter SaaS was quoted about $100 million and, and that's, that's on the, uh, on the, in the quarter. On the quarter, in revenue. right? Yep. It's hundred million dollar revenue, up seventeen percent. I don't know if that was sequential year. It was probably year to year. Yep. But so that's that's your business. That's our business. That's the Citrix Online software as a service business that's okay, focused so on the small and medium size. So on a business. run rate basis, we're talking about four hundred million, growing seventeen percent. That's 
That's uh, considerable. As I, said, as I said, meaningful you know, you, business. Yeah, legit, it, as David Cahill was saying. <laughs> I mean, it's legit. <laughs> it's a legitimate yeah. business. Out of a one point six billion dollar revenue base, yeah. right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and, and uh, with the kind of growth rates that we're putting down, you can imagine year so over year we're going to be more. So the world yeah. spins in Citrix direction. You guys just we were been talking earlier about how you guys got the triple threat going on. Great pole position in this new emerging cloud market, personal, private, public, with nice public presence with Zen. Right. The collaboration side just scales beautifully with desktop virtualization, kind of sandwiching in the middle this private cloud gray area. Right. It is gray area, not a lot of people have proof points, but uh, you know, Zynga is one, it's a hybrid, but it's emerging. Right. right. Um, the collaboration stuff scales, uh, but your business in particular is perfectly, because you have a tangible thing you could roll out today across the board from enterprises down to anyone, right, any size business. Right, you're talking about the, the software as a service SaaS part business of it, is absolutely, fantastic. yeah. Yeah, and as I was starting to say, that the adoption of SaaS by IT is just grown dramatically over the last couple of years. I mean, there was a lot of skepticism two or yeah. three years ago, mm -hmm. but um, it's one of the reasons why we decided to launch GoToManage. It's a product that's really for the IT professional, and I think if we had tried to do that even three years ago, we would not have seen the great kind of um, traction and the accolades that it's getting from the profession today. So, What's the biggest driver right now that you're seeing that's powering your business? You mentioned us as a big opportunity. We agree with that. But I mean, in terms of from your perspective, you look at the mega trends. What, what uh, a couple mega trends are really, really powering in your business? Yeah, well, one is the consumerization of IT. You guys probably heard that from every speaker that's been <laughs> We've been, been talking about here. it for years. Yeah. <laughs> but if you... Um, Finally, it's here. Thank God. <laughs> if you look at it with particularly the online business for, for Citrix, that has affected the small and medium-sized business more, I think, than any other part of the market. Because you've got now small companies that have... They used to have like a PC that the secretary would run to keep appointments and now they actually have you know a data closet with servers and virtual servers and they need to take care of those they need to manage them so you've got doctors and lawyers who are now savvy with IT terms and then you've got them taking devices into their own hands and that's driving our business hugely and the cost that they were employing to keep that up and running was significant I mean yeah. now they just turn key that to you Yep. And that's kind of where you guys could step in, right? Yeah, yeah, to, to our customers that use the software. That Take us through the, your biggest uh, use case where you're seeing the most adoption right now for, for the SaaS side. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about, about collaboration, right? So, so we have seen just huge growth in that business and, and looking at our product lines, that's the one that's leading in terms of growth rates. And it's just the idea that right now, if you're going to meet with somebody, you don't need to be in person and the software is so ubiquitous and so easy to use that everybody needs it. We use it every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> do you really? Absolutely. Yeah, we yeah. We have and now team. with HD faces. Yeah, well. Right? Uh, so that's not necessarily a good thing, Elizabeth, <laughs> with our company. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> John and Dave, of course, it's okay. Yeah, no, uh, it's yeah. easy. We won't last <laughs> long with HD advances. Yeah, so the collaboration business uh, is growing much faster. As you said, it was 30% growth last quarter, John, right. so um, really a, a bright spot. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, it very much is, and it, it's a global trend, not just a North American trend. I think that's the other, um, the other thing that's been driving our growth rates, and you saw us um, do an acquisition in Germany at the beginning of the year. It's, it's, um, it's worldwide. So what's the vision for the SaaS business? Can, I, can, I, can you bumper sticker that for us? The vision for the uh, SaaS business is that everybody, both consumers all the way through SMBs, are going to be using these kind of products all the time, both collaboration, they'll be running their business on the IT services products, and then they'll be using them at home to connect to the world. Right. On any device. On anywhere. any device, anywhere. Anytime. That fits beautifully into the overall Citrix vision, right? Yeah, exactly. You've got you know, you've got all of our great Zen type products running the enterprise and then you go yeah. down to our SaaS based business and it's the same story, the same vision, but um, for a different target market. Yeah. You guys have been actually built from the ground up, SaaS, hundred percent, not a lot of on premise as you mentioned. Talk about the um, the role of orchestration, because we've been talking all day about orchestration. We had some other folks on from Citrix about that talk about how complex it is with HDX is in particular was a good interview. Real Pat, that guy was passionate about his product. I was, I was like smiling so much after after. No, sorry, you know, I missed Derek, that one. You know Derek. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's I good. Don't. Uh, but orchestration is a big buzzword around you know tying things together. But behind the curtain on the SaaS side, you have that operation. Talk about some of the orchestration things that are that the people don't might not know about that you guys are implementing with the new Citrix. Now that you're bolted onto Citrix, 
There's some stuff going on behind it. How does that all work? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of an interesting question because our, you know, our persona to, to the market is that you don't have Easy. to worry about that, right? Don't, don't ask me that question. You don't want to see the man behind the curtain. Um, the but it's, his name is Zen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Wizard of Zen. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, but if, if you kind of peek behind the curtain on our, our side, it's, um, it's how we're growing that, that quickly because people are attracted to these services and we're just up and running all the time. And they don't do, have, have to do anything except... Uh, you know, generally go to a website and sign up for the product, and they've got it, right? But in the background, there's a huge global set of data centers and you know, completely redundant services, um, taking you know just millions and millions and millions of sessions um, hour by hour over the day and, and 24 by seven, and so that's all powered in the background by by Zen and Citrix. And so Dave and I have been talking about this for since since EMC World when we kind of had the aha moment that the services business being both delivering services as a, you know as a service self or service pass etc to services like support are changing really radically and we've had you know EVPs of customer organizations talking about this we've talked to you know boutique consultancies we talked to CSC the old school right. outsourcers I mean it's completely radically being deconstructed yeah. So I want to get your opinion on that, and we're launching a, a services angle focus over the next six to twelve months because there's a lot of innovation going on, and not only delivering the services, but using cloud for services like customer support, like um, market intelligence yeah. that we yeah. use, for example, to using mobile devices. So, yeah, can you share any knowledge there? Yeah, I mean that that's a great question because there, there's just a complete sea change that's going on in the service world today. So if you look at contact centers five years ago, even you know, totally um, addicted to premise-based software, it would take them, you know, the change out of systems in the service world would be you know, 10, 15 years. And that's all changing from a couple of different trends. One's that they're adopting SaaS, right? So that's, that fits our story wonderfully. But we led the, the market in remote support. We created that market. We have 40% market share in it. And what's happening with that is it's becoming now just a ubiquitous part of that change in the service trend. And that's driven by, by mobility. So everybody has three or four different devices and you know every individual has them. Somebody's got to support them. Yeah. So every company now needs a contact center that has remote support yeah. and can go out and help their, their end users. So it's being driven by that, and it's being driven by the fact that you've got companies like Salesforce, and the contact centers need to take remote support and just plug it in seamlessly so that the person supporting it doesn't have to do the overhead of cutting and pasting records and you know, taking, um, taking any time out of their day to manage actually the contacts that all happens automatically in the background. We, we often say that the world's going from a connected world to a managed world, right? So yeah. we used to support connected devices, now we manage I mean, the devices. I mean, this is a disruptive change. I mean, literally, the wealth creation that has happened from, quote, services, the yeah. value chains and yeah. all those processes yeah. um, that you know, the, <laughs> the management consultants would create are gone. Yeah. So money just doesn't disappear, it shifts. Yeah. So where do you see the shifting and what opportunities do you see for people getting into the services from a skill set, just opportunities? Because there's, there's some innovation going on and radical change at right. the same time. Right. You know, it's it's gone from this, this total centralized world of services. I mean, you mentioned the huge outsourcers to niche, very... Um, very g defined use cases that open up the world for lots of smaller companies. So, you know, the SMB trend is affecting the contact center world also. So you've got players that are able to do a particular service for a particular device and do that very well. And because it's all connected in the background with, so uh, with SaaS-based software, you can use their service as orchestration, well as Dave, orchestration, Dave. Orchestration. There it comes. Orchestration. Bring them all together. Yeah, nice. Innovation but it's not, and the, services. The money's not just shifted. It's it's grown. It's grown. Right? I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, this wealth creation on the new model. There's the old, the incumbents are dying. We had we were just at last week at SAP Sapphire, and the big conversation was agility, business agility, and and <laughs> the the wealth creation going on there has disrupted those years of suits and you know millions of dollars in one year deployments. Yeah. 10 year I mean, outsourcing yeah, deals. Ten, yeah, it's just like, yeah. so that's upside down, right? So all this is interesting to us. I mean, maybe not to everyone else, so <laughs> but <laughs> to us. Yeah. No, but, this, but people are making money. I and mean, this is like not the sexy area of the business, but there's money being made, yeah. real dollars. Yeah, I, mean, you know. 
I, um, I often compare our remote support business to the guys that sold shovels during the gold mine days, <laughs> right? You know, yeah, it's the cliche of yeah, right. it wasn't the gold miners that actually made the money, it was the people that made the shovels. True cliche. Yeah, yeah. Well, we make the shovels and we make really, really good shovels. Well, we really appreciate your time. My final question, then Dave, you can ask one more question, is five years out from now, where do you see the, the Citrix online business in, in, real, in, in the world around it at the what, what's going to look like uh, yeah. five to ten years out? How's it going to morph and change both Citrix Online and then the rest of the world around it? Right. Yeah. So, so you heard Mark's keynote yesterday. So we've we've got the um, the individual consumer cloud. We've got the private cloud. And we've got got the public cloud. Well, we're the public cloud. So we're going to be offering services in the public cloud for everyone. Right. Yeah. And the other thing you talked about is is I loved his um, manifesto. Right, he said, you know, the five things, that, uh, and and of course, you know, one of them was self-service, exactly. right? And it fits really perfectly into what you guys are doing. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. so congratulations on uh, on uh, running a great business Thank and, you. Uh, and and not being done. <laughs> and you know oh, what? On the we, next, we're on just the, getting started. On the actually. next earnings call, we're going to actually ask the question. That's right. For you, and the, or the, uh, you know, how's that uh, <laughs> SaaS business doing? Right? Don't tell Mark and Dave I yeah. put you up Let's, let's plan yeah. now the question. So what questions should we ask? We'll plan <laughs> the questions. So everyone will know it'll be us. Is it, is, I'll, I'll take is that it, off Is it just e excellent management or are there other factors? <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, thanks so much. Appreciate uh, thank coming Thank you very much. Appreciate it.